Uh, what's going on, everybody? We are on the way to Chipotle here with the squad. Yo. Yo. Got everybody back here. So this is the first episode, first show, I guess. Um, we're gonna just start filming like behind the scenes of our life. It's gonna be very raw, but we're gonna show you guys what we do, you know, day to day, our business, our life, and how we execute. You guys, stay tuned, you know? It's like most people, they don't really show you, most entrepreneurs don't really show you their day to day. They, they portray an image of themselves on, you know, social media now, it's really easy. I think it's a healthy thing for people to start showing everything about their lives, you know? For sure. With that said, stay tuned. So look, I'm gonna introduce you to the squad right now. Obviously, you know Josh. What up? We got Nick over there, Ecom Poppy Daddy, whatever you wanna call him. He was uh, one of my first Ecom students, now a pretty substantial entrepreneur, running gyms, doing so many things. We got little Tyree over there, he's part of the squad. But yeah, we're just getting some lunch, enjoying it. All right, heading out from uh, Chipotle right now, heading out to Chase Bank. I um, actually got to pay out one of my top affiliates for his weekly commissions for one of my businesses. I think it's like 11 grand or something like that. So I'm going to go make a quick payout, wire him the money. It pays to build a brand, to do social media, to sell things online. You guys got to learn how to do it. So uh, see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so to add to what I said before, I talked to Pete today and I basically said, hey, if the seller's not going to cover the 40 grand, like we're not bridging the gap. So, I mean... I'll, what I'm gonna basically tell the agent is if they're not gonna do that, then we're just going to, since we're still in our DD period, then we're going to just look for better funding. So basically saying, fuck you, uh, we'll keep it under contract until we find a better loan. Deals. We just glide, niggas is parasites. I get pussy, get off whites. No, I'm right here. Just sent the uh, wire to one of my affiliates. 11,190. Start making money online, baby. Time to make more money moves. We have to do it live today. <laughs> Got a lot of work to do, baby. I've been told you to always tell me that, bro. You got a lot of work. You got to bring inside this guy something behind We got a lot of work to do, baby. You got to sit on the couch. What the fuck? No! It's not going <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> Your face looks so sad. I got the house cleaners here. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Anybody in the house on the door? Sorry. She's literally right there. Hi. 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 Hi
Um, Instagram ads and YouTube ads. Okay, so uh, I came across this uh, link tracking software that it also attaches the Pixel 2 to click, so it's really powerful. Okay, word sounds yeah. good. Let's talk about August. What do you want to see I done in the next 30 days? Um, I want to pretty much scale this to uh, five bedrooms a day again. <laughs> So uh -huh. almost dead. The ads. And then I got yeah, the ads. Because um, we were currently running, like, we spent, I think, um, 50K on ads. And then we did, like, a quarter mil. Um, but the problem was that then we had to switch merchant accounts because we had merchant issues. Um, so I kind of put everything on pause. So I want to rescale back to that. And then as well as create new different offers and as well as create more organic audience um, and traffic as well. Of course. So the first order of business is getting that entry stopped and payment system all working properly. And second order of business is getting the affiliate section all working properly. Then I think we can start digging into those ads. Okay, yeah, that works. We can do that. All right, cool then, brother. Um, I'll shoot you a text. I'll let you know uh, when I send the payment. Perfect. All right, bye. Bye. Big business, baby. <laughs> hey, did you forget where the gym was? I need gas. All right, so we just got to the office right now. Um, pretty much about to knock out a podcast, but real quick right now, what I'm working on is I'm setting up the Facebook uh, mini chat messenger. So for those of you guys who are not familiar with like internet marketing, um, a lot of people use it for Shopify, internet marketing, uh, pretty much building a list um, where you notify people via their Facebook Messenger so they get notifications on their phone. Um, you know, because a lot, the, the open rate is a lot higher compared to like traditional email marketing, et cetera, plus it's instant. Um, it's a lot more smooth. You set up like these crazy responses and you know, this keyword triggers this and this question triggers this. Um, and it's, it's actually a very, very strong marketing strategy. We're using this um, for our inner circle, if you guys are not familiar with our inner circle yet, um, a private mentorship community so we can notify people like when we're going live, when we're having events, when we're doing meetups. Um, but I've used it for businesses like internet marketing and stuff like that and made you know hundreds of thousands of dollars just using an automated sequence that just goes by itself. No work on my end, somebody opts in and everything is already set up. So just setting that up right now and then we're about to knock out a podcast for you guys so make sure you stay tuned. We'll probably show a little preview of the podcast and uh, make sure you listen to the podcast, the dropout degree. So today, I think out of all these questions, we're gonna go over number one, how to start becoming an entrepreneur. I think that's important. You know, I, I think that that's one of the biggest pitfalls of even becoming your own boss or you know creating your own schedule, whatever it is. It's one of the biggest pitfalls because people go, where do I start? Right. Like, what do I actually do? What steps do I have to change from going from an employee mindset to a business mindset? It doesn't happen overnight, but what is the actual transition for that? So anything you say you're going to fucking do, do it. If I say I'm gonna be a millionaire. Um, you know, three years ago, I went and did it. Right. If you say that you're gonna drive a, a Lamborghini one day, I wouldn't say I have, I'm gonna get a Lamborghini by 25. Shit happens in life. Things right. don't happen when they want, they happen when you deserve them. The biggest thing is seeing results. I don't, we don't want you guys listening to this just to get motivated, just to get inspired. We want you guys to get results. That's the whole purpose of this. That's why it's called the dropout degree. We want you guys to actually have a degree in something that you didn't need to go to college to learn. You guys will have the, the ability, which I bet no other entrepreneur that's ever done a mentorship inner circle course has done, to actually hang out with us, hang out with my team, hang out with my coaches, hang out with the people that I believe in and learn from them in person and you know build a connection with them and maybe possibly even do business with one of us one day. Um, that's this is the only way you're gonna be able to do that. So we'll be doing that um, every other month or every every three months, and it'll be really fun. I hope you guys get excited about that. Also, like Josh said in the beginning, somebody will get flown out probably. We'll make a pick a winner in like 30 days. All right, guys, it is 10 o'clock p.m. Just about. We're uh, done with our work for the day. Um, it's been a pretty eventful packed day. We went. What we do. We went and got lunch, ran some errands, uh, sent out some wires for some affiliates, and then we went to the office, we filmed the podcast for you guys, so you guys will see that podcast coming out soon, and then we did our first live call for the Inner Circle, so if you guys are not familiar with Inner Circle yet, um, we'll go ahead, we'll put a link down in the description, go you know, hit that link, watch the video that explains the Inner Circle, get started if you think it's a good fit for you, um, we're pretty much going to be you know, personally and private mentoring people. Uh, for the course of 6 to 12 months, help them level up their life, help them level up their business, help them make more money, help them get to that next level in life. Um, we did like a two hour call, you know, we're dedicating our time to actually really help people. We made it, we made it like dumb cheap so that anybody can get involved, anybody can, you know, there's, there's no limitations that will hold them back. And um, that's pretty much our day, you know, just bringing out content, helping you guys, and uh, then focusing on some of our other businesses a little bit earlier in the day. 
And um, it's pretty much it. We're just chilling out, about to call it a night. Thanks for hanging with us. It was cool. I think we had a good day. Um, bunch of meetings in the early morning. Josh, you know, he said everything, but it's just a day in life. Like, you know, people always act like, uh, you know, they're so busy, they grind so much, but it's about being, it's about working smarter, not harder, in my opinion. Like, I could work six hours and get more done in, than some the average person in 16 to 24 hours, and that's just how you can leverage your time to become better, so. Um, but I just had somebody reach out to me on Instagram. Somebody, and it's kind of funny, we we're just talking about this kind of stuff. Like, when, if you want to network and reach out with high influence individuals, um, we just had somebody reach out to us on Instagram. They've been hitting me up for months, but um, just we really haven't been, you know, ready to give them the right time to, you know, work on this. And now that we're releasing the podcast, I um, want to obviously take it to the next level. So he has a business called, I guess, Podcast Influencer. He told me he worked with some high um, level and influence individuals, like entrepreneurs, getting them featured on other big podcasts. Um, so he's about to call me right now, and um, we're about to see what he's about. What's his gig? Is he legit? Can he actually help us scale our business? Um, I rarely ever give my personal number out to anybody, um, but from what I've seen, he looks legit. So uh, let's see if he can help us with our business. Yo, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, Josh? How's it going? Uh, nothing much. I'm just chilling here um, actually with my business partner, uh, Jeff Bunting. Thank you for, uh, for giving me the time for the phone call. Yeah, 100%, uh, man. The for the reach out, too, is... Uh, I see, I see you have a podcast, and uh, I see what you're doing with the ATMs and your content that you post on Instagram. Uh, nice content, man, by the way. Uh, with me, I, I help people share their stories to help build authority within their brands, to help grow their brands. Uh, I help them get, on, get them on TV shows and podcasts. A couple of clients of mine, of mine are Danny Morrell. He made $9 million last year off of real estate and hosted the Relentless event. And two, two guest speakers... That are my clients as well, or past clients, are Sam Bacar and Ed Milet that attended Relentless. So that was pretty funny. Um, Ed Milet, he was at a uh, uh, 10X, right? 10X GrowthCon. Yes, that and Relentless in California. Um, do you have like any like testimonials or like any of the um, you know vouching or anything like that? Or not testimonials, but not testimonials, but I have screenshots that I can send you from back to back with uh, messaging and me actually getting shows for him. And him saying, okay, well, my team will definitely get, get me on those shows. So I have screenshots. If you want those screenshots, I can definitely send them to you for proof. Yeah, yeah, definitely send them over. Um, yeah, man, so what, I'm here. So obviously me and Jeff, we work together. We got a lot of businesses uh, together. And we're obviously interested in blowing up a podcast, blowing up our personal brands. Um, so what what can you do for the both of us? Yeah, so this, this is how I help my clients. So I'll give you the whole process. Um, Basically, what I do is after the invoice is paid, um, of course, the process would have before to see if they're interested. After the invoice is paid, I'll send you a PDF template of all the information that I will need. And then once you send me that, I'll send that information, organize it if, if need be, and send it to my design team. And we'll create your very own influencer kit. Now, this influencer kit is, is going to be designed uniquely for you and your brand. And what that does is, when information is tailored for podcasts you guys watching this? and easy sharing for your story. He so might be legit, podcast, he might have something to offer, um, but this is probably not the best way to sell himself. Right. I'll be honest. Like so you, if, what what, what's his name? Um, all the Nathan. Nathan, Nathan if you're watching this, bro, you got to change your sales pitch. <laughs> so, um, or actually, uh, Jeff has a question real quick. So, so then you're saying you're not going to work off performance, you're working off a retainer. Well, I'm saying you're saying that, you know, based on a price and podcast we agree on, uh, you would keep working until then. So you're not saying you're going to be working out performance. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll keep working until the full deal is done. you guys. Right. But do you do anything performance based or no? For example, performance. if you were to say, hey, if I said, hey, I want to be on this guy's podcast or this guy's podcast, not a random person's podcast, would you be able to do that for a set price? Because. I, I, I can definitely. Me, I'm both ahead of a podcast. If I can't connect with a podcast, I'll definitely try to connect with them, the people who are connected with those people. You know, so I can definitely get your name, your information, see by, by the exact guest host. At the end of the day, it's up to them to see if you qualify. But with, with this influence you get and the placement, it'll rise up for you getting accepted to get you to be on this podcast. So 
So I'm not saying um, yep. it's not a guarantee, but it is kind of like... What we're going to find out is, like, is there a process of starting from small to higher level influencers and leveraging these? So is there like a specific strategy, like starting with a, uh, for example, lower influencer, lower view podcast, and then we leverage those and work our way up and then leverage that to get to the higher ones? Or like, for example, the other ones in the past, like have you, how many different entrepreneurs or influencers have you worked with, with say 100K plus, you know, following 200K plus following? Like, is that a leverage point that you use for the podcast or is it like a, like what, is it a press point, you know, based off our press, based off of what is online? Like, what are the main okay, things you so would like to leverage for us to get featured on podcasts? As well as, real quick, yeah, so do you also help, can you also help get people on our podcast? Yeah, I can definitely do that, dude. Like, if you want Danny Brown on the show, I'll definitely, like, tell him how many listens you get per episode. But at the end of the day, I'll give it to him because he has it. Because I give everyone the same options. Right. But I can definitely help you, I can definitely help people get on your podcast as well. You know, no, no doubt about that. Easy. Let me ask you this. So in terms of, one again, uh, leveraging, like, so do we, is there like a certain set plan? Like, hey, we're going to reach out to this person. They get this many views. They get this many listens. Then after we get you there, we're going to get you on this person who has even more and leverage that last one. Then after that, we're going to get someone that has even more and leverage those, you know, first two. And then as well as, like, let's say, for example, I'm like, like somebody who's not your client. Like, hey, I want you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Ty Lopez on my podcast, um, are you going to reach out to him? And we have the connections for yeah, like so Ty and stuff like that, so I'm not necessarily saying Ty in general, but somebody of that stature. Yeah, same. So you're pretty much having is getting people like that on your show. Right. Yeah, definitely, man. Like, it's a piece of cake to me. All, all I do is do some networking, and I'll definitely have them. Like, it's, with me, I, I, I can guarantee the network. It's up to them at the end of the day to see if they want to get on. But yeah, I can for sure do that. Easy And uh, how long does the process usually take? Just really depends on how how long they wanna they wanna take to get on the phone call with me, or uh, to see the information. Okay, and then like, are you, are you like, repetitively reaching out to people, or is it, like a one and done thing, or like taking different approaches, or how, how you were doing that? Uh, just like how 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 we're on the phone call right now with Josh, just uh, consistent and persistent, and we're on the phone call. Right, I understand that. That's true. Um, Just like that. So yeah, man. I mean, what do you, what do you offer me? People get on podcasts and they automatically tap into their network. So you're getting four times the amount of leverage, you know, by getting on a podcast and anything else. You're tapping into the audience, building more audience. Yeah, I'm zoomed through, so I understand all this already. Is Bring Facebook is just say, "Yo, man." Is there anyone that they, that they interview people to get on connection base? You're getting even more connections up after that. Yeah, so it sounds good and all, man. So what you should do is uh, I'll have Josh text you his email and send a uh, yeah, send like a proposal over of like what you plan to do, how much money you want, um, and you know exactly what you're gonna provide. Um, obviously, we don't need to talk about leveraging content. We do that already, but it yeah. is uh, so yeah so just send over a proposal and then we'll look at it tomorrow or whatever and we can get back to you got you got you um, I'm just going to my, my my process like my exact detailed process for the longer number I can on the on the phone but seeing on Josh's profile on Instagram 151,000 followers which podcast is not going to say no uh huh uh huh so yeah man so I mean essentially all we need is just send over a proposal we'll look at it and then from there, we can see if we'll work together, see if it's a good fit. If not, you know, it's all good. But, uh, yeah, man, definitely. perfect, man. And then I'll have Josh send his email over to you, and then, uh, we'll probably link, you know, talk again tomorrow night. Sounds great, man. Yeah, definitely. Sounds great. Uh, thank you for the phone call, and we'll keep in touch again. Sure, bud. Bye. Bye-bye. So, obviously, it looks, sounds like, you know, knows what he's doing. He's done it before. Um, but I like how you like to critique his like little uh, sales pitch. He's throwing out too much numbers. Um, if you guys are in sales and you guys are into um, just trying to build a brand to sell something online to build a business, people want to hear stories. I want to relate to somebody. I want to figure out like right now how he can he help me. So this guy right here, Nathan, and I respect towards him if he's watching this too. Um, you know, and if you're watching this, Nathan, what you need to do 
is obviously you said you've seen my social media, you follow my content, you should kind of know where I'm already at, right? And base your sales presentation off where your customer is currently at. This is why market research and doing research on me is important because this sales presentation is not as convincing for somebody who's already kind of experienced all that. I just want to know right now, this is where I'm at, this is where I could be with your services, and here's why. I don't really need to hear two times X, three times X, four times X, five times X, because reality, those numbers don't mean shit. Essentially, a sales pitch should have been more directed at number one for sales, I think is so important, is when I'm on the phone trying to convince someone to do something, aka buy my service or buy my product. For him, it's a you know podcast growth service-ish. He should have, number one, built a relationship with Josh. Like, he should have got on the phone and been like, hey, man, I've been reaching out to you since, I think, June 4th, he said. Yeah. But then he immediately went to the next line was, you, uh, here's, here's what I've done. Um, here's people. And then we asked for testimonials. He has none. So he's like, but I, but I can send text messages. And so it seems that his business model is a little unprofessional. I wasn't necessarily. And maybe he's just not that experienced. But you can always say that, you know, some people that are inexperienced, still might be amazing at their job. So right. we're not discrediting him. All I'm saying is on that sales presentation, he should have, number one, related Josh to people he knew, which he started to, but, but then said... Me names of people I have never heard of. Yeah, the people we never heard of. He should have said, um, if he does have no clients, he needs to show the results from the clients that have not a big name. Um, he's talking about MLM people, and you know I'm not in that industry, nor do I care about MLM. So if he's talking about how he's grown an MLM guy, he needs to say... This guy had no growth. He had zero followers on Instagram, and then I got him on X, Y, and Z's podcast. And from there, he started growing. And then we could look at that and say, hey, okay, well, if he really did do that guy's podcast, and he had that exponential growth with those podcast services, then it's convincing to Josh and I. Right now, it just sounded like he didn't wasn't prepared for the call, and that's fine. It so we'll look down. we'll look over the the proposal, and you know we'll get back to him. But. Uh, it is what it is. At the end of the day, man, I got respect for everybody that's hustling. Like I said, he's been reaching out for me for a while, messaging me on IG for quite a while, mm -hmm. giving me information, sending me, e he says, sending me emails, all this stuff, right? And a lot of it looks very repetitive, like the things that he texted me and just told us on the phone calls, kind of what he said in the message. Um, and obviously, what he said in the message wasn't that convincing for the time for me to know make it worth my time so it needs to be more prepared on the phone call to give me something that's gonna be like boom like that's gonna sell me you know and also personally for me um, I don't necessarily like I mean Jeff you can give me your opinion on this but when I get on a phone call with somebody and I want to know about the services and the first thing is they say well you know yeah so after I send the invoice and after you pay me and blah blah blah, 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 blah. so I feel like it kind of went straight into like you know, not, hey, I'm going to help you. Not, hey, I'm going to do something for you. For, like, a lot of times, if you really want to work with a high-influence individual, you should be willing to do something for them for free at first to prove your worth instead of just going for, straight for the sale. So he's hitting me up, and the first thing he's saying is, hey, man, you're going to pay me. That's what I'm going to do. And I understand, obviously, you know, uh, he probably respects his time. I'm not saying he should be giving away free stuff. But you have to look at where he's at, where I'm at. Somebody with a couple hundred followers versus a couple hundred thousand, right? And... His services sound like they're something that is low cost and it's only based off time, right? It's only based off him reaching out to people, him networking with people. So if he really, if he's really been reaching out to me for almost three months now and he's saying, I kept reaching out to you, I kept trying to get a hold of you. If you would have just been like, hey dude, I got this dude who wants to put you on his podcast. This is this guy. He has this many followers, he has this many listens. Are you game? He said he's down. I would've been like, let's do it. I would've did that the first week. And then we probably would've already established a business relationship and would've been working together like today. He could've reached out to the people in the podcast already and been like, hey, I, I got these guys that already agreed to it. You know, all this time I was trying to reach out to me, he could've landed me as a client. I could've been paying him whatever he wants to charge me like three months ago. And it wouldn't be a call and it wouldn't be like, I kept reaching out, kept reaching out, kept reaching out. And you know, again, like I said, obviously you gotta respect your time. Obviously you have to, he has to respect his business. But if you're really that dedicated as an entrepreneur, you gotta do what it fucking takes. And if he believes in his services and that they will value and benefit me as much as he says it does, he has to be willing to go out of his way to make that shit happen. If he believes that I will get value out of it, I will pay him for the services, if that makes sense. And um, that's what a lot of my graphic designers have done. We talked about it literally in my podcast today. Literally, we talked about this exact same type of scenario in the podcast we filmed a couple hours ago, but just for a different type of service. 
Um, so I think that's an important lesson to learn. Again, uh, I'm not going to blame him. I'm not going to be too rough. It's 1.30 a.m. I literally just messaged him on IG like, here, dude, give me a call. Uh, so not going to knock him too hard. But just, again, that's a learning lesson for those of you guys that do want to offer services and products and, you know, get in touch with high-influence individuals. Hope you guys tune in with us. We're going to be doing more of these. You guys are going to see some cool stuff. This is just kind of a basic day. But when we have our bigger days where we're having crazy, like, 10-hour work days, you know, we're moving in the new cribs or, you know, doing whatever, traveling the world, we're going to start pumping these out, pumping out content for you guys because that's what we want to do. That's what we want to use our brands for. So, guys, peace out. I had fun. See you guys on the next day of the day.